see you've been Joe too. Yeah. Don't forget cockerel. I haven't got a clue what it means. Social assessment forms by Friday, please. Your turn to buy biscuits. I have one stuck in the mug. Please wash after use. You're the mug. <laughs> so what's Jo up to? She's been on efficiency bills, hasn't she? I knew you'd all forget. Jo's taking the afternoon off. Of course, her day with Jessie. I hadn't forgotten. What's this? Well, you know, Jo's grand with the... Um... Oh, the brain tumour, yeah. Yeah, well, things aren't looking too good. In fact, she's on borrowed time already. I see. That's why it's important for Jo to spend quality time with her. Jo's more worried about how we'll manage without her than the day itself. Hence the post-it campaign. So, look, a little bit of tact and sensitivity wouldn't go amiss. Who the hell's been sticking these in the loo? Mrs. Robinson's test results. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Oh, I need them before she comes in, you see. Yep, yep, I'll find them for you now. Cheers, no rush, no rush. Um, here we are. Great. Oh! No, I'm so it's stupid! It's okay, it's okay, leave it to me, leave it to me. I've got 15 million things to do and I... Don't panic, Joe, please, don't panic. It's sorry. Right. Not a very good start to your day. Just that there's so much to Joe, do here. Joe, don't take this the wrong way, but we can cope without you, honestly. Yeah, for one day at least. Why don't you go now? The place won't fall apart without you. Do you mean it? Yeah, go on. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Kate. Have a great day. Um, now, you know the photocopy man's coming at 2.30. Go. You can always catch me on my mobile. Go. go. You've got far too much junk in here, Mum. I'll never find that thing in a million years, you know. Well, if you spent less time complaining... Complaining? If I... I shouldn't be going on wild goose chases for cigar boxes, Mum. I'm here to look after you. I am not an invalid yet, and this is a most important wild goose chase. Hi, Nan. Hi, Dad. Oh, oh hello, love. Mm. Oh, oh. <laughs> Matt gave me the rest of the day off. Oh, that's nice of him. So, are you ready to go, then? Well, I would like to, but... Aha! Have you found it? Oh. <laughs> I hope so. That's it. Thank heavens for that. Now, what's so special about this cigar box? It's private. <laughs> right. We can go now. Oh, good. Come on. Oh. Yeah. You're done. Oh. Uh, you're looking forward to the day for ages. Oh, so have I. <laughs> Can you open the door, love? Well, where are the keys? I gave them to you. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, can you take away then, Dad? Yeah. <sighs> Joe. I've got it all planned. Oh, yes. <laughs> Joe. I've got them. We're going to take you away from the noise and the dirt. We're going to find somewhere nice and quiet. Yeah, well, well, actually, I thought... Oh, oh. you're brony. Oh, sorry. Come on. Couple of steps, Mum. I can manage. Swing your bum round. Do you mind? <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Oh. Mind your head. <laughs> oh. 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 <sighs> so? Where are you taking me? The country. No! Why well, I thought you like the country. I do. Today we're going to the park. The park? Are you going deaf, Joanna? Uh, <laughs> so, where are you going? Uh, the park. Don't argue, it's safer. You got your handbag? <laughs> Bye. Cheers, Dad. Right, come in. All right. We're going to have a, a lovely day today. Yeah. I've had a lovely day with each of my grandchildren. They've enjoyed it too. But today's going to be really special, I know it. 
good. Alexandra Park's got memories of me. Really? That's where I did my courting. Oh, yeah? In the war, there was, there was this big tree, this spreading chestnut tree over the lake. And it's where we used to... Well, you know. <laughs> Nan! <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought it would be nice to see it again. Well, I've not been there for 50 years. <laughs> well, Mr. Coco. Bye bye. Hello, oh, Jack. How's things? Oh, fine, Dr. Rollins. Right. Um, I haven't got an appointment, but. Uh... Look, I'm due a coffee break. Uh, can I get you one? Jack, are you worried about Jesse? Yes. Well, her condition hasn't worsened, has it? I mean, when I popped round, she seemed... No, oh, she hasn't got any worse. Well... Jack, for your mother's sake and for your own, you're going to have to tell me. What's the matter? You know, I'm very proud of you, Joe. Don't be daft now. Oh, I am. Not only have you got a good job with people who obviously think of the world of you, you're beautiful and intelligent, and one day you're going to make some lucky young man very, very happy. Thank you. Thank goodness your mother had a chance to bring you up decently before your dad ran off with that Carol woman. What she ever sees in her, I'll never know. He loves her now. That's why he married her. He had to divorce your mother first, though, didn't he? Mm. In my day, we stuck at marriage. We made it work. He's trying his best to make things easier for you, Daddies. That's why he moved into your place. And I am not ungrateful, but I won't have that woman within a mile of my door. <laughs> Do you think it's going to rain? Because I got me brolly. Don't worry. I rang Michael Fish and he said it definitely wouldn't rain today. There might be the odd hurricane, but definitely no rain. Anyway, today is your day. <sighs> Come on, then. What? Oh, it's not easy. <laughs> no, let me just try and put me up. That's seat. No, oh, mind the bag. Give me your bag. Now, just try and... Come on. Oh, oh, it's no good. Oh. Can I help? <laughs> Looks like you're having some trouble. Oh, we are. Just a bit. Um... Love me, please. Thank you. Excuse me. There we go. Is that comfortable? Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Uh... Jesse, Jesse Helm. Hi, Jesse. I'm Paul. And I'm Joe. Hi, Joe. Thanks for helping. Not at all. Do you work here? No, I'm an astronaut, actually. <laughs> Get away. Enjoy the park. Thanks. <laughs> it started with little things. Someone had to feed the cats, get the shopping in, you know. Then we found out she was forgetting to pay the bills and even to read the post. It was all getting too much for her. So now my sister-in-law, Mary, comes in and does the cleaning and the ironing. One of my brothers, Derek, gets the shopping in and does the garden. Well, look, people don't realise how much is involved in caring for somebody in Jesse's condition. Not that we mind. We all try to do our bit. Jo comes around whenever she can. She sits and talks to Mum and keeps her company. Makes a laugh. But since me and Mum sorted out that business about, um, you know, Joe's stepmom. Yeah. Well, I've moved in with Mum, so it's to be there at nights as well. Makes things easier for her, and I feel better knowing there's always someone there. But she won't let Carol near the house. I hardly see her. And I get to talk to my wife on the mobile. Well, maybe Jesse will come round. I'm sure she appreciates all you're doing for her. You would think so, wouldn't you? Or sometimes when you're caring for somebody, they've got other things on their mind. 
I know, Doctor. But it's not about being appreciated. It, it's just the strain day in and day out. And the not knowing, you know, how long. Well, as I've said, Jesse could go on for well, a few more months. Brain tumors are unpredictable things. However, if she continues to refuse the treatment, I'm sorry, Jack, it's a difficult situation. All I know is something's got to change. This is lovely, isn't it, Nan? I wonder if we'll bear a man will come back this way. Might show us his pot in shed, eh? <laughs> Nan? Nan, you're right. Nan. What, love? You were miles away. Was I? Yeah, I was just talking about that American Paul. Paul? Oh. You know, Will Barrowman. Who? Oh, where's my tree, then? We haven't found it yet. There's loads of trees in this park. Well, it, it's over there. Come on. Oh, all right. <clears throat> oh, well. it's funny. <laughs> What's funny? The last time I was here, I never thought the next time I'd be in a wheelchair. Oh, don't say that, Nan. You'll have me in tears in a minute. Oh, I was sweet 16. Back to Lauren since then, eh? <laughs> I certainly am. Oh, I should write my autobiography. Nan, why won't you take the treatment? I don't want to talk about that. Dr Rawlings knows what's best for you if you took the chemotherapy. No, I don't want to be filled full of radiation. It's not like that, Nan. No, I can still make up my own mind, can't I? And, and I don't want pumping full of drugs until I don't know who I am. Don't be so morbid. No, no, when I go, I want to go peaceably like my George. Oh, but Nan... No, but nothing, Joanna. I don't want them wasting time and money on me when there are children out there with problems. You deserve a chance too. I've had my shot and I've had a good life. When I go, I want to know about it so that I can appreciate all the good things that have happened to me in life. Like you, my little Joe. And Alexandra Park. I've forgotten just how beautiful it was. I feel terrible even talking about my mother like this. Like she's a burden. Especially since we've only just started talking to each other again. We all love her to bits. We'd do anything for her. Well, it sounds as if you're already doing everything you can. But we don't really know what we're doing, do we? It was bad enough when she was just ill, but now she's starting having these absences all the time. What absences? She drifts off into her own little world. When did they start? Just the last few days, really. How long do they last? From a few seconds to a few minutes. Well, how many she had? Half a dozen. No one else knows about them. They can happen anywhere. When she's eating, in the bath, in the middle of a conversation. There's nothing dramatic. She just stops dead. But it's very worrying. I mean, she could have an accident. I've got to be behind her all the time. It just adds to the pressure. What are you saying, Jack? I want... I want you to put Mum in an hospice. A hospice? Yeah, somewhere more suited to her particular needs, you know. I'm not sure. I mean, has Jessie said anything about this? No. But there are nurses in these places that know what they're doing, aren't there? They're dedicated, like. Yes, they are. But Jessie's not stupid. Uh, she'll understand that, that by entering a hospice, we're, we're practically saying that her days are numbered. Well, they are, aren't they? Possibly. But at the moment, she's got what she needs most, a home and a family. You, you can't put a price on what that means to Jessie. <laughs> Look, maybe we could organise some, some temporary care while you take a holiday for a few days. A few days? Well, there's great demand for NHS carers. <sighs> Perhaps we could increase the nursing visits to once a day. Look into assigning a Macmillan nurse to Jessie. What's one of them? Well, they're specially trained to deal with cancer patients. They'll visit twice a day, and if Look, be... Dr Rawlings, I'm not sure that's enough. Now, I know you don't agree with me, 
but I'm there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. She's becoming impossible to live with. I'm not trained to deal with what I'm having to do. I can't cope. Oh, can't we stop for a rest? We'll be there soon. You said that half an hour ago. We were in the wrong bit of the park. And you thought it was the right bit of the park. Oh, indulgent old woman, Joe. <laughs> I am, Nan, but how are you going to know this special tree when you see it? It's really all at the same to me. Oh, I'll know my special tree, all right. It's got a carving on the bark, a lover's sign. What, you mean like a love heart with your initials in it? <laughs> Our names. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jack. There just aren't any easy answers. So you say. You mustn't let the situation get you down. I know it's easy for me to say, but Jessie needs you to be strong at a time like this. She really does. I know. I just feel awful even saying those things. You needed to get things off your chest. But I'll do my best to arrange some daycare and more regular home visits from the hospital. We'll do all we can, I promise. Thanks. Right, that is it. I've had enough. You need to take more exercise, Joanna. If I did any more exercise, I'd look like a weightlifter. <coughs> right, I'm going in for a nice scream. Would you like one? No, no, thank you, love. I'll wait here. And I don't belong. I won't. Thank you. Hello. Oh, hi. How you doing? Joe. Oh, I remembered my name. I'm fine, thanks. Paul. <laughs> oh, sorry, you're reading. I didn't realise. No, just uh, taking a break. What is it? Somerset Mom of Human Bondage. It's really good. Have you read it? No, I don't think so. I'll lend it to you sometime. Your popsicle's melting. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> They were coping well. You can't just expect you to wave a magic wand. I mean, that kind of care does not come cheap. That's when you can find it. Um, how much longer are they expected to stick this out? Oh, it's hard to tell. A couple of months, maybe. Poor Jo. I'm worried about her. She dotes on her nan. Do you think she'll be able to handle it when the time comes? So, after a year of bumming around the Far East, I thought I'd give England a try. Right. You're dripping. Um, thank you. Oops, I've been in here nearly ten minutes. My nan's gonna be going spare. She's looking for a tree. Gotta go. Bye. So, I was Nan. I was talking to that Paul. Nan? Nan? Nan! What's up? It's my nanny. She's disappeared. Well, she can't have gone far. She's ill. She shouldn't have gone anywhere. I'll get help. Nan! Nan! My tree. No, I've already phoned them and they put me onto your department. Kate said you were having a bad day. I thought you might want some. I have waited for nearly 15 minutes. No, don't put me on hold. Thanks. This is driving me around the bend. Well, I think I might be able to help you this way. 
There's this lady called Maureen. She was recommended to me by someone last week. Qualifications, tons of experience, and I think she might be able to handle Jesse. Right. Now, she used to work for an agency, but that was up until a couple of months ago because they charged too much. And I know she's looking for work. Where is this number? Where's Jay when you need her, eh? <laughs> you nearly gave me a heart attack, Nan. Looks like you don't need me anymore. Oh, thanks. For everything. See you again sometime. Yeah. Uh, bye, Jesse. Bye, love. Right. Now, where's this lover's carving? <laughs> Jesse loves Frank. Well, this is the wrong tree. No, Joe. It isn't. You're cheerful? Yeah, good reason, Mac. One, we've managed to get to the end of the day without the practice falling apart, despite Joe not being here. So we have. And two, I've managed to get some extra daycare for Jesse. Fantastic. And three. And three. I'm going home. This is the tree that me and George did our courting. Oh, we were completely in love. And then we had an argument. What was it about? Oh, I don't remember nothing much of lovers, Tiff, but you know how things are. Well, then we stopped courting. Straight after that, he joined the Merchant Navy, and um, that's when Frank came along. Frank only wanted. Well, I soon found out what he wanted. When I told him I was pregnant, he vanished. And then I wasn't allowed anywhere near the army camp anymore. And then one day, George just turned up on her doorstep. Oh, he did look handsome in his uniform. He was on leave. He wanted to know if I'd go out with him. Well, I just burst into tears on the spot. And he hugged me. And I told him everything. Everything. And what did he say? He asked me to marry him. You, you mean that, Joe? Your dad was another man's child. I don't want him to know. He has a right to. No, he doesn't. And you mustn't tell him. I want you to understand. I kept it a secret for him and for George, not for me. George loved me and he stood by me and he, he raised Jack as his own. It didn't matter to him that it wasn't. But it would have destroyed him if anybody else knew. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Well, I'm glad. No. I don't mean it like that. I mean it... I'm glad cos you and George had such a fantastic relationship. You really loved each other. Yeah. <laughs> what a secret. Why did you tell me? Because I wanted you to know. I didn't want you to remember me like this. An old woman in a wheelchair with a brain tumour. But as a young woman who was once loved by a wonderful man. 
and for a very short time was very, very happy. Thank you. You keep it, love. It'll help you remember me. What happened to Frank? He was killed on D-Day. A, a friend of a friend told me. Oh, no, that's awful. Nan. Nan. Nan, you, you've gone off again. Nan. Nan. Can you hear me? Nan, wake up. Don't go away. Nan, Nan. Nan. What's the matter? You're right. Yeah, what happened? Where was I? I don't know. One minute you're here, the next you... You OK? Oh, Joe. I'm frightened. I don't think I realised until now how soon I am to go in. I mean, I've been so busy so far doing bits and pieces. I, 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 I don't think I had time to think about it. Uh, I, uh, it's, it's all this reminiscing. It's, Oh, it only seems like yesterday that I was dancing to Glenn Miller. I don't feel old enough to die. I don't want to lose you, Nanny. You won't. You won't. You won't, love. No, you won't, cos I shall always be up there. And in there. Oh, I'm going to... I'm going to miss you as well. I'm going to miss all of you. But you, you've got to look on the bright side. I'll be seeing my George again. And I'm looking forward to that. You be sure to give him a big hug from me, won't you? Oh, love. <laughs>